Hello and welcome to your final uh, remote lesson on Henry I and for your entire Anglo-Saxon England and Anglo-Norman Kingdom module. So this is paper two essentially completed after this one. We'll do a little bit of revision obviously um, in summer and, and next year we'll be, we'll be revising in earnest. Uh, but this is the last lesson in terms of content. So what we need to look at here is, is Henry's successful reunification program of England and Normandy, how he gets rid of his final remaining brother, Robert of Normandy, um, and how he essentially consolidates his power really from, from 1106 up until his death in 1135, when he's in an incredibly powerful position. So the events that we're looking at today only pertain to 1100 to 1106. That's the period of study that we need to look at, and we need to consider the factors that led to Henry's defeat over Robert. There's quite a bit that I'm asking you to do today, uh, so it's going to be slightly longer as a video, and I'm, I'm actually going to ask you and direct you to um, two other videos that I'd like you to watch um, to give you a bit of, of context and to help you out with one specific topic. Um, and from this, there's a few tasks as well that you need to complete, including a little bit of source practice because we haven't done that for quite a while. And um, thanks again for all your essays that you're handing in. You can make sure that uh, you hand them in if you haven't already. I'll try and get the marks back as soon as possible. So uh, just to go through that topic checklist, this is the final topic that we're looking at today. We're looking at the misrule in, in Normandy between 1100 and 1106. Um, so essentially the, the chaos, the disorder that's taking place there. And then Henry's campaign in Normandy, which concludes with the Battle of uh, Tonchebray uh, in uh, 1106, uh, which is a major battle. And you can find a lot of information online about it. This is the final uh, topic that we need to uh, finish with for this Anglo-Saxon um, component. So the 20 marker that you could potentially get that would relate to this question would be how far was Henry, in contrast to his brothers, able to reunite the Anglo-Norman realm? So it's essentially looking at how uh, successful he was in this particular process of, of consolidating power in Normandy. And we've said already that you know, when we looked at William Rufus and, and Robert of Normandy and, and actually all the way back to William I, even though this question wouldn't look at William I because it's only about um, Henry and his brothers, that there are there are geographical and geopolitical problems with Normandy regardless. So we're not going to focus on that too much, but I just wanted you to have a, a 20 marker in case you wanted to, to approach this. So the tasks for today um, are, are threefold. Uh, the first thing that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to look at the events between 1100 and 1106 and I'd like you to complete the table that I've provided for you. Um, now that, that essentially involves you recording down the events as, as I'm talking through them but then thinking about how this weakens the position of Robert and how it strengthens the position of Henry. And from that what we should be able to do is complete a diamond nine where you've got to create the different reasons to outline the, the most and the least important factors that led to Henry's defeat over Robert at Tonchebray in, in 1106. So you need to decide whether or not it was the battle itself um, or whether actually that the, the seeds had been sown years prior uh, by William, uh, sorry, by Henry and by um, Robert uh, that ultimately meant that by 1106 Henry was destined to win this particular conflict. The final thing that I'd like you to consider is a source analysis and evaluation um, from a, a, a record by Orderic Vitalis um, of the situation in Normandy in around about 1104. So it's a, it's a straightforward sheet. I want you to make some annotations. I want you to think about the context from what we've looked at today. And I want you to look at the, the background of Orderic Vitalis and, and whether or not this makes it a credible account to look at. So there are three different things that you need to complete and please make sure that you just send me a record of them. That could just be a photograph um, or it could just be uh, sending through the documents if you're you're doing them online. If you don't have a printer um, you can obviously do this in your own format so it, it's really just to keep that record that, that we've done this particular work. Whilst I remember as well I, I, I do understand that the Microsoft Form quiz uh, responses didn't necessarily give you um, a record, so didn't accurately say what you've got for each one. So when I give you your essay marks via uh, email, I'll also put down the, the marks that you've got for your, your quizzes. You all did very well, so um, there's nothing to worry about there. Right, so looking at Robert of Normandy, um, we're going to break it down into um, the years 1100 to 1106. So this is um, after his return from the First Crusade. With the years 1103 and 1104, they're quite similar, and likewise 1105 and 1106, you can categorise them together. But just to give you the general overview before we do a deep dive into each particular year and we talk about what happened, 
Um, let's just give that general outline. So in 1100, Robert of Normandy returns from a crusade. In 1101, he lands in England in a strong position, but ultimately does nothing. And, and a treaty is concluded between uh, Henry and William, uh, Henry and Robert. In 1102, there is division in Normandy between Robert of Normandy and a, a, a powerful magnate, the former Earl of Shrewsbury, Robert of Belem. In 1103, there's all-out war between the two Roberts, and in 1104, peace is concluded between the Roberts. We'll, we'll find out why, but once that peace is concluded between the Roberts, that means that Henry is now going to be an enemy of the two of them. So in 1105, Henry crosses the Channel um, and for the next two years slowly tries to consolidate more power in Normandy. And in 1106, there's a second invasion um, which concludes the Battle of Tonchebray, which is incredibly important and it is the end point really of, of Robert of Normandy uh, as a figure that we need to consider for this particular course. And really it concludes Henry's consolidation of power. Henry is a very successful king after this particular point in terms of wealth, power, control. So what we'll now do is we'll do a deep dive into each particular year. If you look at your table and you can pause after each particular one, you can do a bit more research if you need to. Um, and you can ask questions obviously online. So in 1100, Robert returns from the Holy Lands to Normandy after a successful campaign, and he is seen as a war hero. Um, this is a very successful crusade. It's probably the only successful crusade for the Frankish forces, so the forces from Western Europe. Um, and when he returns, um, he's, he's obviously been away for a number of years. He's been fighting. It's an incredibly long journey with all the hardships that, that come alongside that. And you will look at that when we look at paper one. Uh, and the Crusades. So Audric Vitalis at this particular point says that uh, Robert was exhausted by the fatigues of his long pilgrimage and more anxious to enjoy the peace of his couch than the toils of war. Now that's that's quite harsh on, on Robert. Um, he has uh, done a lot in the Holy Lands and he's got a very big decision to make in 1100. His brother Henry has, has successfully taken the throne uh, from him in England and it's that indecisiveness in 1100 that really is Robert and Robert's undoing. Does he go to England um, and take the throne from Henry before Henry secures uh, any more power um, and at the same time obviously get the support from the magnates that, that are unhappy that Henry the youngest son is now king of England or does he consolidate his position in Normandy? Normandy at this particular point is under attack from Maine and Anjou um, and he really should garrison um, the, the castle at Le Mans really this indecisiveness and and this this long arduous journey that he's returned from means that he doesn't really effectively do either he doesn't go to to england he doesn't garrison at le mans and as a consequence um, he loses that strategic territory there in normandy as well so already he's weakened his position within the first few months of his return uh, to normandy in 1101 in the summer of 1101 Robert's position is slightly different though um, and he, he feels now that he's, he's in Normandy now that he's got the support of a lot of his magnates that he, he could potentially um, take over England and in, in that particular year he has the support of some of the most powerful magnates in England and in Normandy as well so if we're looking at some individuals that supported him we've got Count William of Mortain who's a nephew of William the Conqueror so um, obviously a cousin of, of Robert and Henry, um, William de Warren, uh, who's Earl of Surrey, Ivo of Grandesmil, uh, who's Lord of Leicester, the three Montgomery brothers, so that includes um, uh, some individuals which we've already considered before, uh, we've got Robert of Belem, who's Earl of Shrewsbury, he's a really powerful figure at this particular point, we've got Ranulf Flambard, we've got um, Arnulf of, of Montgomery, Roger de Petaven, um Roger de Petaven, sorry, um, these are, are key crucial figures so really Robert looks like the more powerful figure compared to Henry in 1101. He successfully lands in Portsmouth and you can see the port of Portsmouth um, in this map here of uh, the county of Hampshire um, so it's, it's at the very bottom uh, where you've got the, the natural harbour of Portsmouth and um, he successfully lands there he, he manages to bypass the, the fleet that Henry set up and really he's in the position whereby he could take the throne he meets henry at alton near winchester which is is the red dot on your map and 
really what you're expecting here is perhaps some negotiations, but Robert to consolidate his position. That doesn't happen. Instead, in 1101, we have the Treaty of Alton. And in that treaty, Robert agrees to Henry being King of England if a stipend, so an amount of money, is paid to him of 3,000 marks annually. So Robert receives 3,000 marks annually from Henry if he agrees for Henry to become King of England. Now, we know that the... Um, the, the war chest and um, the exchequer of, of England is incredibly wealthy at this point. So 3,000 marks isn't that much to Henry, but it's desperately needed by Robert. Um, perhaps this is a decision, you know, that, that Robert is, is more interested in Normandy anyway, but really it's a failure on his part. Um, what Robert also has to do is he has to renounce his claim to the English throne. Um, he also has to uh, surrender what you know Henry has to surrender his claims to Normandy and they also agree not to punish each other's supporters and likewise if there is an enemy um, that somebody else is, is made very clear then that automatically is, is the other person's enemy as well and um, in terms of that particular um, treaty obviously it strengthens Henry's position it consolidates his position in England it ensures that Robert doesn't invade uh, England again it also buys him off with an amount of money that isn't really going to affect him that much and this is um, this is is made worse for Robert not only is this Treaty of Alton seen as a, a failure by lots of these magnates that supported him but Robert's ally Ranulf Flambard is a bit of an embarrassment you, you read about him already he causes further embarrassment by appointing his 12 year old son as Bishop of Lisieux uh, in, in Normandy which is a large area and now that leads to a rebuke from Pope Pascal II who says that that's a gross use of power it's, it's a poor appointment um, and really again this distance Rob, this distance is Robert of Normandy um, from from some of the other magnates so he's starting to lose support but this is made more worse, you know, that the issue of, um, of of a 12 year old being uh, appointed as the, the Bishop of Lisieux is, is, is a bit of an embarrassment. But the thing that's really going to cause problems for Robert of Normandy during this you know, particular uh, period, so the next few years, um, is his namesake, Robert of Belem, who we've just mentioned, the man that supported his invasion in 1101, the Earl of Shrewsbury. Um, he's an incredibly powerful and rich figure in England. But what Henry does in 1102 is he uh, labels him a traitor and he exiles him. So Robert of Belem is, is no longer allowed to be in England. Now, because of the Treaty of Alton, that also means that he's not only an enemy of Henry I of England, he's also an enemy of Robert of Normandy. And Robert of Belem decides because his, his territories and lands in England have, have have gone gone away he isn't able to, to take them anymore that he should be going to his lands in Normandy um, and particularly his lordships in, in the Diocese of Sees so that's S-E-E-S -E -E uh, and so as a result Robert of Belém goes into Normandy and causes chaos for Robert uh, uh, Robert of Belém causes chaos for Robert of Normandy for example um, he starts to take over his castle uh, at Vignettes and um, that leads to chaos because um, not only is Robert of Normandy having to besiege a castle, but then lots of these other magnates decide, actually, Robert of Belém is, is the figure that I want to rally around. And at that particular siege, um, another Robert, you, could, you couldn't make this up and make it even more confusing, but another Robert, Robert de Montfort, um, he decides to switch sides away from Robert of Normandy to Robert of Belém. He causes a distraction. He burns all the tents of Robert of Normandy that are besieging the castle. Robert of Belém and his forces are able to escape and um, they're able to defeat some of these forces as well. Um, and it's a disaster for Robert of Normandy in 1102. So in Normandy, we've got chaos in that particular year. And in England, we've got more stability. In 1103, um, Robert of Belém's forces um, do something which is, is, is widely condemned. They burn a, a, a nunnery to the ground which has uh, Robert of Normandy's forces inside. But Robert of Normandy's forces um, aren't necessarily clear from any condemnation as well because actually what they did is they stabled their horses inside the abbey which was an insensitive act at the time. Um, so they're starting to uh, break some of these sacred rules about what 
people could and couldn't do in, in consecrated uh, grounds, so grounds of churches and, and abbeys. There's further victory for Belém at Exmouth as well. There's a baroni, uh, baronial war in, in Evreu, as well as an in, inheritance dispute, um, which involves um, William of, of Brittle, who's the son of William Fitz Osborne, who, who we've we've you know come across before. He dies in 1103, and um, that leads to a, a an inheritance crisis. Henry backs one side, Robert of, of Normandy backs another. There are further and further problems, and really by 1103, Normandy is not in any kind of control at all. Robert of Normandy does not have control over this area. He's been embarrassed in the region of Lisieux, um, in um, you know, in, in various different towns and settlements. Robert of Belém has support. Um, we've got this um, problem around Evreux, which is uh, in the, the southeast of of Normandy as a territory. So real chaos by 1103. In 1104, um, Robert of Normandy has to you know, sort this particular issue out. He's 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 had uh, horrendous issues with these these territorial disputes, with besieging of castles. He needs to get control of the situation again. And his decision in 1104 is to meet with Robert of Belém and make peace. Now, that obviously sounds like the sensible act to do. If they, these two particular individuals can make peace, then it's going to ensure that there's less war in the region of Normandy. But this is obviously bowing to the will of a magnate who has essentially attacked uh, Robert's, Robert's area. So it's seen as a sign of weakness, but also it invalidates the Treaty of Alton. Because Henry and Robert had signed that particular agreement where they said, um, if one of them has an enemy, then that's each other's enemy. Now that Robert of Belém and Robert of Normandy have signed this treaty, Henry um, decides to, to travel to Normandy in, in August 11 of 04 and berate his brother for poor leadership, saying what, he's, what terrible job he's done in Normandy, the fact that he's made peace with Robert of Belém, you know, the fact that somebody who's been trying to kill him for the past two years is now his ally it is a complete embarrassment. Um, and the fact as well that a younger brother goes to Robert, the eldest brother, um, the eldest son of William the Conqueror, again is, is a further embarrassment and it causes you know, more magnates to question whether or not Robert of Normandy is the right leader. In 1105, Henry invades for real. Um, at this particular time, he feels strong enough in his, his domestic position and he knows how uh, divided Normandy is. Um, you know, Robert of Belém and Robert of Normandy are now sided together, but there, there isn't necessarily that support across the whole territory. When he does decide to invade in 1105, he brings with him troops, but importantly money, and he buys the support of a lot of uh, Castilians. Um, so these are castle governors uh, across the Normandy region, um, particularly over the, the west of Normandy around Bayo and, and Cannes, uh, which I've, I've tried to highlight um, in, in, the, um, in the map at the bottom of the screen. So Really, by by August, uh, Henry has secured a, a br you know a, a bridgehead into central Normandy. He's taken two crucial towns of, of Bayo and Cannes. Um, he's only been there for a, a short period, but what he's essentially doing is he's deciding rather than try and take it all in one go, I'm just going to have a base. And so, because wars aren't fought as often in, in winter, in the summer and in the autumn, um, it's it's really the case that. Willie, uh, Henry is preparing for 1106, whereby he can launch um, a full territorial invasion and consolidation of the, the Normandy region. So this is a smart move by Henry. In 1106, uh, Robert attempts to mediate with Henry. He knows that this is going against him. So he travels to Northampton in England, uh, but to no avail. Um, Robert attempts to sue for peace, uh, attempts to have some sort of negotiation. Henry doesn't want to listen to him. And, and Henry invades again in the summer of 1106 in June, again bringing money, again bringing troops and having you know this, this bridgehead of, of Bayo and Cannes in, in West Normandy, he can now move into central Normandy as well. Um, although Henry has the upper hand, he was aware that Robert is still a formidable opponent. Uh, opponent. He is somebody that is experienced in combat and in war. He does have support of figures like Robert of Belém, um, and he also controls important towns in Normandy, Normandy including Rouen and Falais as well. Um, 
He's got supporters like William of Mortain, Robert of Belame, as, as we've already said, they're holding firm. And in September, after a period of, of raiding, which isn't really bringing any sort of rewards for Henry, um, Henry takes the fight to William of Mortain and places his castle at Tonchebray under siege. Now, Robert, camped at Falais, decides to offer assistance um, to his ally, William of Mortain, at Tonchebray. And that autumn was not only bad in terms of weather and was stormy, this was the, the moment when we're going to see a climax in the events between Robert and Henry. And is at this battle of, of Tonchebray in 1106. Now, at this particular point, I could go through the battle, but there's an excellent video on YouTube, um, which I'd, I'd recommend that you watch. I'll put the link in the description below. But I would suggest at this particular point that you watch this video. Um, it's It's got the, the movements of the battle. It's actually this series has got a number of battles from our time period, which I'd again recommend that you watch. You know, the ones from Stamford Bridge, Battle of Hastings, ba Battle of Fulford Gate as well. Um, so do maybe subscribe to that particular channel. So have a watch of this video um, that I've put on the screen. You can come back to this particular video uh, once you've you've made your notes about the Battle of Tonchebray and, and, and what occurs. And so following the, the Battle of Tonchebray in 1106, it's, it's clearly the case that Henry has secured his position as King of England and has now secured the territory of Normandy as well. Robert spends the rest of his life in, in his brother's captivity, he dies in captivity as well. Um, and, and Henry is his success at 11, in 1106 um, means that Robert never really has that much support across Normandy um, or a, a, across uh, England as well. His son, you know, Robert's own son, William, does try to destabilise Henry I. He doesn't succeed, he doesn't get enough support. Um, Henry isn't without problems in Normandy. He does face attacks from King Louis VI of France, uh, Count Fulk V of Anjou, Count Baldwin VII of Flanders, but he is able to repel them successfully. Um, and really up until 1135, he experiences unparalleled wealth and success as king. Uh, and that's really all you need to know about that period from 1106 to 1135. We're not really that interested in, in those particular years for this particular course. Um, if you are interested in finding out more about Henry I, there's a lot of information online. He's a very um, well-documented king. Lots of chroniclers at the time were interested in how he was able to consolidate his power, how powerful he was. There's also a lot of information about the succession crisis that follows Henry I. Um, he names his nephew Steph, uh, Stephen, who's been in his court as king, because he doesn't have a, a male heir to the throne. It leads to a period called the Anarchy, where we see um, his daughter, Henry I's daughter, Empress Matilda, fighting uh, Stephen in, in what's known as the Anarchy. I'd recommend the book or the TV series The Pillars of the Earth, which is um, partly fictional, but based in, in this particular time period, if you are interested. So that's it, really, for Henry I. So with all the information that you've got now, you need to complete those three tasks. So the first, again, is to make sure that that table's completed. Once you've completed that table, you should be able to think what were the most important and perhaps the least important factors that led to Henry's defeat over Robert at Tonchebray in 1106. So, for example, after watching that, that other video about the battle, is it the case that there were some, some incredibly important decisions that were made in that battle or was... Henry in such a powerful position that the, the course of that battle was a foregone conclusion. And what I'd like you to do as well is I'd like you to complete that sheet, which is a bit of source analysis and evaluation. It would be based on the overall question of how far could the historian make use of Source 17 to investigate the disorder in Normandy under the rule of Robert Curtos or, or Robert of Normandy. Um, it's just three boxes that I'd like you to do. And if you've got any questions, just send me a message about it. We'll move on next week um, and I'll start sending some information about the coursework uh, which will be starting soon. Um, over the summer um, I would like us to, to do some consolidation on all of the events that we've looked at, so the Anglo-Norman um, Kingdom but also the Anglo-Saxon King Kingdom, some independent booklets that you can be getting on with. So thanks very much for watching, if you've got any questions uh, just drop me an email.